Hey, Jim, can you get the lights over there? Please? Ah, thanks. I look much better when it's dark. You know, Fred was talking about oh, we get people from from all over, out of out of town. Well, the last last year or two years ago, this uh, Indian family came. Indian was a dot, you know, and uh, four or five of them. And one was this uh, old gentleman. He was at my age. Except he was a gentleman, and, and we're going we're going around, and, and uh, he happened to be the uh, grandfather of one of the girls there, and uh, he he looked at me, and I'd look and see what well when she tell me what he said, and you know we kind of struck it off, and we we. <laughs> We were walking around together. He wouldn't leave my side. And uh, every time we turned around, he'd go, pick, 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 you know. <laughs> and it just so happened that uh, this family had just opened up a couple of uh, UPS stores. And uh, 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 we, we were getting some printing done for them, or by them. And the second time I was in there, the, the girl in there said, that, you know, I know I've seen you before. I know I have. And she got on her phone and she said, there. I said, oh my gosh, that's Grandpa. Yeah, that was us. <laughs> I tell you, but we get a lot of people like that. But anyhow, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, talk to the mayor a little bit. Uh, you know, I drive around the town and see all these pictures on the life standards. You know, it really looks nice. I mean, the people are all smiling, everybody's happy, little kids and all, up in the light poles. Well, my picture's on a fire hydrant. Why is that? Man, what? Gives a dog something to do. All right. Last uh, last fall, uh, Fred gave a a, a great uh, uh, picture of a New Brighton at, from the start up to 1940. I'm sorry, this one is out of out of uh, size, but. Uh, that's that was last uh, last fall, and he started out with the the Indian village that was on the north side of Long Lake, and uh, and then uh, Jacob Byswinger, who was the first settler that stayed. A lot of people came in, but they they left. They didn't like all the old trees, I guess, in the sandy soil. So they, uh, they pretty much left, but uh, uh, Jacob Weisswinger stayed. And of course the stockyards, as, uh, as uh, Joyce had pointed out in her, in her uh, uh, interview there, that uh, stockyards were really what got New Brighton going. Now we're going to talk about the history of New Brighton from 1940 on. Now, of course, the, the most important part of that uh, with, uh, uh, in the development of New Brighton is the Twin City Arsenal. Now, I know a lot of you have, have probably seen this before, and I don't think there's too many people who don't know about the Twin City Arsenal. But uh, I'm really prepared here. You know, in, uh, when World War II had started, uh, 
the United States wanted to stay out of it as much as possible. And, uh, but we were furnishing armaments to Great Britain and probably some other countries around too. They would, they would buy it from us. Well, F FDR uh, figured that, you know, we're going to have to get into this. So he came up with this plan of, uh, of, ars of arsenals around the country. And uh, what he wanted to do was uh, have government owned but contractor operated. So it was pretty cagey of him to, to do that. Uh, there was, there was going to be several, well, quite a few ammunition manufacturing plants around the country. But in order to do this, of course, and to have a partnership with the different states. And he approached Harold Stassen, who was our governor, Republican governor, and SDR Democrat president. And they worked it out. They got on the same wavelength and uh, and uh, uh, started started all this. And then Great Britain came to us and said that uh, you know we we need your product, but we can't afford it. We don't have any money. We've spent it all. We're bankrupt. So the. Uh, FDR came up with this Lend-Lease program. And I'm sure you probably all, all know what, what that is. But uh, he had gotten that through Congress uh, in 41, earlier in 41. And what that meant was it's a system by which the United States aided it's World War II allies with, with uh, war materials such as ammunition, tanks, airplanes, trucks, food, rubber, nylon, uh, all kinds of stuff, everything. Everything that a country needed. Now in order to, in order to uh, get this going, uh, each of the locations had to have land available, a, an available workforce, railroads, and a highway system. You got to have enough land to build on. You got to have the available workforce to, to get 26,000 people were at Twin City Arsenal. And that, that's a lot of people. And you're, you're bringing them in from Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, probably down Rochester, maybe as far as Duluth, into uh, what uh, the other uh, state over there, Wisconsin. There we go. And uh, of course, we've got we had railroads. Uh, that was one of the things we get to bring the raw material in and send out the the finished product, and also the highway system especially the highway system because the people, 26,000 people got to come to work over here and how are you going to get there? You don't walk. Well, they, they did devise different ways. Uh, there was one of the, one of the, I think, the best way was they would you'd get uh, a trailer house and they'd, they'd rent land from one of the farmers outside of the arsenal area and uh, they put their, park their trailer on the, their property. And uh, that would work good for the farmers, it would work for the workers. Of course that and, and car, uh, car clubs. Can't think of it. <laughs> Anyhow, they, they figured out ways of, of getting through. And now the land, of course, we've had 2,400 acres 
over in the northeast part of New Brighton. Not really New Brighton, it was out of New Brighton. But New Brighton was the closest town, so the arsenal kind of get got uh, uh, related to the uh, uh, arsenal, Twin City Arsenal. So there, there are 48 families were already farming, and uh, there's a we got a we got a plat map that shows all of the people that owned land in there. There was a, they spent one hundred and thirty three thousand six hundred and eighty five dollars for a land. Now that that comes out to fifty six dollars an acre, which is uh, not too much. And what they did is they first first part of August in forty one they 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 bought this land and told everybody, all right, you got to the rest of the month to clear out. Take what what you can with you. Take take whatever you want because it's gonna get all bulldozed over. Although that is kind of a bitter pill to swallow. So, uh, but anyhow, and by August, of course, uh, some of the crops have been harvested already. But uh, the rest, they were harvested by the soldiers from Fort Snelling. Now there, there is the area. I wish, I wish I would have a, my pointer. But the area is uh, County Road I, up there in the north, and this was Old Highway 8, which was 35 that we got out. And then down, down here to Highway 96, and then over here would be Lexington. So that's, that's the area that uh, they had set aside. There is a, a plat map of some of the people that uh, that owned the property and the acres that, that they owned. Shuda, Gronowski, uh, Waldock, Schiffsky, it was old New Brighton people. Oh, you know, they're, they're still on Waldock, Ryback. They all, own, they all own us and Indiquits up at the top there, <laughs> they were the last people to go because he had uh, he had gravel. He, he would he was still gravel, but he couldn't move the gravel. So he he kind of got a raw deal on that. But uh, anyhow, he was the last one to get out of there. Now implementation. How how are we going to do this? We've got uh, we've got this land now. We got it cleared. So. The governor went to uh, Federal Cartridge in, in Anoka. Now that was that was run by Charles Horn, and it was a very very successful company. Uh, they were uh, uh, making uh, uh, small air small small arms uh, cartridges, and uh, uh, turned a good profit. He had a hap happy people over there. And uh, so he, he was uh, approached and said, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. So uh, he was in charge of, of uh, making all the ammunition. So they got the 87 million to build the plant to make, to make the ammunition. And uh, like I said before, 56 bucks an acre is what they broke. They broke down, they broke ground August 28th. 41, and that's a very important date to remember. Besides, besides uh, the armament uh, uh, operation, they had they built a city. You know, the Twin City Arsenal was a city. All the water lines, electric lines, they put in motor or roads, and maintenance. They had to maintain all of the all the facilities there. And they had some other things like the uh, fire department, they had a fire department, security force, security was very tight, and hospital. 
bus system, a rail terminal, and of course, here again, this is uh, Charles Horn's deal. Oh my goodness, what did I do here? He didn't have me to run the, or run the computer. He, uh, he had a, a plant newspaper to keep people appraised of what was going on. So you weren't in the dark. You, you knew about all that stuff. And sports leagues, you, you got to have some fun. They had ball teams, they had uh, uh, bowling alleys, or bowling teams, dance teams, uh, uh, vocal lights, uh, vocal uh, 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 organizations. They had all kinds of fun things. The highways were rebuilt to satisfy the needs of the workers. Twin City Rapid Transit added 15 bus routes. That's, that's how we spelled it back, uh, back in, in those days, uh, bus routes. Uh, and uh, New Brighton, of course, with all these people coming in, they had to expand. They had to build more businesses grocery stores, mercantile, liquor stores. They have a liquor store. Uh, in fact, they had, <laughs> they had four liquor stores that were privately owned. And uh, the uh, fathers of New Brighton decided, you know, we, we don't have enough money to build these buildings for all the facilities that we need. How about a municipal liquor store? So they went around to the, <laughs> the, four, the four people that owned the liquor store and said, oh, we'd like to buy it from you. And if you don't want to sell it to us, we'll condemn your property. <laughs> okay. So they did that. And uh, that was a huge, huge add, add, add addition to uh, uh, the income of New Brighton. Here's, here's what New Brighton looked like uh, back in those days. You know this? You, you've probably seen this picture in, in the uh, uh, depot because we've got it posted there. I love it. I love it. But you see, that's, that's old Highway 8 going up there up to the top, and well, my short arms, you know. 694 is probably right in there. And 10th Street would be in here, the, the community center over here. But uh, yeah, they, they say they had, they had to uh, kind of plan when they were going out. If you had to cross the road, you can't do it during, during heavy traffic. Look at it. How are you going to get through? And it just it, it was it was good. And they built the Muni, the, the, Muni, the powerhouse, huh? The, the, the four liquor stores combined them and and met bring uh, this. I think this particular building, I don't know exactly how, but it was probably, it was probably in 46, I'm going to say, is when this building went up. And uh, that was a, that was a great money maker. Her, Fred and I were in the Boy Scouts at that time, and uh, we we're selling bumper stickers, keep, your Minnes keep Minnesota green bumper stickers. So we, we went over there and sat next to the next to the exit door there at night and, and well you could imagine how how many of those stickers you could sell people coming out of there i'll tell your wife where you work <laughs> now they, they did such a good job that uh, we were 25 percent over anticipated uh, uh, production. And uh, so we were in really good shape. 
Now, Roosevelt got on the train back in Washington, D.C. He came across the northern part of the U.S. and down, down the, the, the west coast and then across the south. I think it was two, two and a half weeks, something like that. He, he went to all of these and uh, uh, it, was, it was quite a thing when he came here because he uh, came basically in the middle of the night and, uh, and security was really tight. They, they didn't even tell people what was happening. A lot of, a lot of them didn't know very few knew that he was coming. So they basically set up uh, New, New Brighton as a uh, as a substitute uh, White House, you know, for a few hours, <laughs> phones and everything. Now, I picked this this name, Battle Scars. Uh, you know, like I say, in, they they broke ground in August of '41, and by February of '42. They had built this city and were shipping ammunition. Now that's that's what happens. If government really works for you. Now there are some battle scars too because they had they had a lot of accidents. They really, really did. And uh, I I didn't bother to list a bunch of them, but there's. Uh, First of all, contamination. And I guess most of us know about the contamination of the water in New Right. And the Army has, uh, well, they declared, what, 25 uh, square miles of uh, Superfund to uh, clean up the land and the water, and the lakes, creeks, and dug deeper wells went down for, further to, to another aquifer and uh, the Army is paying for it and they're going to continue to pay for it as long as we're around. You'll, you'll, if you go around it, the area, you'll find these pipes coming out of the ground and they just sit up about a, sit up about a, a foot and with a padlock on them and that's where they, they monitor the water quality. Now on the on the east side of the arsenal, there's a big mound, and that's where they would test fire all their uh, equipment. And it just so happened that uh, a piece of shrapnel, whatever that was, uh, hit a guy that lived over there and killed him. Alexander Nelson was his name, and they, had, they named a, a road after him. Not that he cares anymore, but uh, he, 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 got, he got killed. And like I say, there's, there's a lot, there, there's, there's some real funny stories about what went wrong, what went on there. But uh, you can imagine building all of this so fast uh, you didn't have time for environmental impact studies or anything like that, and uh, you know it, it had to be you know at the time. Now, supply basically the entire world with supplies. Uh, we were running out of out of food, out of materials. So we have rationing. Now the Lendley's uh, encompass some 40 countries that needed resources from us. So, you know, we're, we're, we're sending all this stuff out. We're running out. So, uh, ration stamps. I don't know if you ever, any of you remember ration stamps. I do. Remember uh, going going down to, uh, we'd walk down to uh, the grocery store and uh, I remember at the meat market, you know, at the, the back of the store, uh, mother would take out uh, her ration book 
And if you're going to buy meat, you're going to have to have, uh, you can only buy so much. You have, still have to pay for it, but you've got to have a ration stamp too. And uh, ration stamps were, were for everything. Grant gas for your cars. That, you know, when, uh, when, they, uh, uh, when you would give, give rides to other people. <laughs> what do you call that? Carpool? Yeah, thank you. Carpool. Somebody's listening. Uh, if you're running a carpool, you get extra gas uh, ration stamps for gas. So they, they kind of have that too. Big, victory garden. Anybody have a victory garden? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Kind of, you must have had a victory garden, didn't you? Huh? No? Uh, well, I know my mother made me plant vegetables and tomatoes, vegetables, the, you know. Always had, everybody had a little victory guard, and that was something nice. And then you have, uh, if you've got a bench member in the uh, uh, armed service, then you got a plaque to hang on your wall or in, in the window. You know, and that was, you took pride in that. You know, and we were all in it together. We were all in it together, whether we wanted to or not. Well, that's enough of the uh, arsenal for right now. Uh, the churches. There was a, there was a lot of churches now, and I'm not going to go through all of them. But uh, I go through the first one. It was the uh, community church on uh, Fifth Fifth Avenue and Sixth Street. Where we got that? How that happened there? Uh, Art didn't tell me how to get out of some of this stuff. <laughs> uh, anyhow, this uh, this was the church, first church. You know, my uh, great grandparents were the first people married in that church, and my granddad was the first person that was baptized there. And I'm sure most of you remember that how they, uh, you know. Uh, Right, uh, running um, very north and south was Fifth Avenue, and then right in, coming into the church was Sixth Street. And if you if if you ever go down Sixth Street, be sure to wave at me because that's where I live. Uh, you, you you walk along Sixth Street and you you look to the north, and it goes down. And you look to the south, and it goes down. Right on a ridge. It's Gospel Ridge. Because that's where the church was. Now the church, I know my granddad would, would have to drive a uh, horse and buggy to northeast Minneapolis every Sunday to pick up a minister. I don't know if he, if he shopped up and down the streets for what or not, but he wouldn't always have the same minister, and it wouldn't always be the same denomination. But it would it would be a, a non-Catholic uh, church, and uh, that we'd have it it switch back and forth. Now that uh, that church got uh, taken down, and now it's 694 and Long Lake Road. That's where the community church has been for now, now for quite a few years. Now the Catholic Church came in uh, maybe within two years, I guess. And I should have had a picture. It started out as a basement church, and then they built this this uh, beautiful church of a brick, and it had uh, steps running running uh, up and down. Here's the front door and the steps coming up that way and, and down that way is really a pretty, pretty uh, church. Yeah, why they tore it down, I don't know. I suppose they outgrew it. But now they're over on uh, 
8th Avenue, excuse me, 8th Street and 2nd Avenue. And that's what happened to them. The elementary school, we remember that, huh, our tiny, ah, yeah, yeah, elementary school, built in 1939, grades one through six. And uh, uh, it, was, it was a nice school, it was, it was great. But uh, when you reached, uh, when you graduated from sixth grade, then they'd farm you out to the, one of the various high, high schools around whether it's Edison or Marshall or, or out in White Bear, wherever they could take them. Well, they, they kind of filled up too. So when, uh, when we got to uh, six, got done with sixth grade, they didn't have any place to send us. And Moundsview was just starting to be built. So we, and and St. John's had, uh, had uh, school too, first through sixth grade. So that whole group uh, of us, we were, we, we were there in seventh and eighth grade. We had to stay there in, for, for two more years. And uh, we had to take all the St. John's people to, uh, over there too. So we had, uh, very crowded, very crowded. They split our class. Uh, and we had we had the same teachers for three years, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, God love them. Had <laughs> me for three years. <laughs> but anyhow, then Moundsville High School was born, born in 1954, and uh, that was that was really neat. Here we get to go to a brand new school, and, uh, and it was, that was great. That's going on now. Now, celebrated, we're a happy town. Happy, happy town. We got nothing but celebrations. We celebrate everything. We we'll celebrate Wednesday. Whatever. We had the squash show. We had Memorial Day, we had a fishing contest, an old timers night, oh yeah, Fourth of July, Stockyard Day, Rhubarb Fest, just coming right on. Well, the squash show, you know, the, 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 the farmers are on, the, 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 with all the sand that on, if they raise squash, pumpkins, gourds, and, uh, what they do is, is uh, they come into the squash show and they would present their product. Who would have the biggest, the ugliest, the whatever. And uh, uh, they would win prizes. I know the uh, people would come over to Joe Hips and uh, uh, come over because he raised the Hubbard squash. And uh, they'd say, I, I want to buy that one. I won by that one. So they carved their names in it and Pat paid Joe for the for the squash. And then when it came time to harvest, they'd go pick up their squash and enter it in the squash show. A lot of them we raised it at home too. But that was that was a public that was a popular thing. Memorial Day, of course, got <laughs> got to be a W a parade. Parade all the, and and they would they would march uh, from St. John's over to the cemetery, St. John's Cemetery on on Seventh uh, Street. They do that. They still do that now. In fact, uh, they will be having it uh, uh, about next month, and they have a real nice ceremony over there. Uh, and my neighbor Arnie Waldock. Uh, he, uh, his, his family is all over there and when, when Ernie passed, his brother Vern, Ernie had quite a sense of humor. He couldn't keep up to Vern though. 
we were we were in the Arctic, died in the winter time, so we're we're over there in this tent, and uh, we just go oh, stand in there and we got the, the, the ceremony going on and burn pipes up. I said, yeah, we got a lot of people over here, a lot of family. They're just dying to get in here. <laughs> His brother just died, but he, oh, he, he had to have that. Yeah. Fishing contest. Ah, the sportsman club. They had this fishing contest. Every, Jan corrected me if, I, if, I, if I'm wrong here, but it was uh, it, the Sunday closest to the February 1st, usually when it was, and uh, we probably still have it now if there wasn't a thing called, uh, what were they calling it? The, 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 the Super Bowl, ah, the Super Bowl. Well, anyhow, here's a picture of Joe Hip. He brings his tractor and his auger out there, and he would drill holes for everybody coming to the to the fishing contest. Now this this is an awesome picture. Because this is this is a double row of cars parked around. Now this is Long Lake here, this is the South Shore. You know, the beach used to be over here and right over in there now is where the uh, uh, boat launch is. But all of these cars and all these people, these are people. They're not bugs, they're people. And and the sportsmen would have their uh, concessions there. They'd have hot dogs and and I don't know whatever they had behind the counter. But uh, it, it was great. I mean, it was especially fun for for uh, kids. Go out there. Can, can, you, can you imagine a fish getting through there without getting caught? Ah, that's just big. They had clowns and, and uh, all kinds of things. It was, it, was, it was really fun. It was a great thing. <sighs> Old Tyrant's Night. Uh, normally we only tell four or five stories a piece to uh, talk about this. But uh, it's quite, quite a parade that we would have. There's a, uh, I'm pointing to that. There's the grill, the grill cafe. That was a hangout. And Joe, uh, Joe service, Joe Boschick service. I think this picture would, could have been taken from the, uh, from the uh, roof of the municipal building. <laughs> the, the, the muni, the muni, the liquor store. Yeah, very, very well attended. There, there is the piston pilots, the car clubs. Yeah, uh, uh, and handsome guy on the left there. That, that's our president. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Back when I had hair. But uh, we we formed we we're in about 50, 54? 54, 55, somewhere in there, wasn't it? And, you know, and, and Fred, Fred's folks built us a clubhouse. And, and we had, we had everything. It was a two car garage with an upstairs that, that we finished off, and we had some very important meetings up there. By the way, we had a great, and that's, all us guys, you know, we still get together. We were getting together every month, but we kind of ran out of uh, restaurants that were conducive to our our uh, style that we had been used to. So we don't uh, get together that much anymore. But every, every year, a couple of years, a couple times anyhow, and uh, that's a long time. That's seventy years. There's another another one of the uh, events. Is uh, Jerry Lamar, who used to be uh, uh, one of our directors. He had this old uh, pickup truck that he re revitalized, and uh, that, that's the uh, varmint hunters. 
the Varwood Hunters. I'm surprised that uh, Franny Palasic isn't here because he, he's one of them. He, he normally is, is here. But uh, and there, because this is this is taken over on the rest, right side here. This this is the uh, village hall over here now. And look at the people. They're they're five, six, seven deep watching the parade. I mean, this was, this was the granddaddy of all celebrations. And uh, it was, uh, unfortunately, I, I think there was only one jail cell that was available in town. So we kind of outgrew that and uh, stopped having it. There are vice swingers. And uh, it's probably a couple of the sportsmen club there. Uh, there's another one. Fourth of July. Fourth of July was another was another uh, big one. Uh, here again. Hey, we got uh, we got the color guard. People all up and down the roads. Uh, just like just like we do now for stock stock hair days, only it it, it, it was a, an entire community celebration. Now Fourth of July, they had they had more more things going on. They, they had uh, where the community center or not the community center, the uh, uh, village hall is. There was the, 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 the bank. The bank was quite a bit steeper, and uh, we'd sit there like a, like a grandstand and watch the fireworks that they, they put in the in the ball field and blow those up. And of course, everybody had had uh, fireworks that they picked up or from wherever. Uh, that was always a good thing. And we weren't with the wimpy stuff like sparklers and that. But you got big ones. Fred still got some of the scars. From that. Oh yeah. But uh, oh, one one of the one of the things I know that before I was, I was even a member of the historical society, I think Joyce asked me to, to get up and, and and talk about some of the memories of New Brighton. And well I I, I wondered what I was gonna do and I ended up filling filling up both sides of uh, of a sheet of paper, and I, I never got to all of them. But one of them I was, I was going through, and it said the Grease Pink Contest. Yeah, yeah. Were you in that? No. Well, the Grease Pink Contest was they, they take a you know, probably a bear, a baby pig, grease them up, and then the ladies would form a circle around this pig and at, at the appointed time they go after that pig and all these ladies re wrestling with this pig and he's just squealing and all and I said I don't remember who but I remember seeing a lady catch catch that pig and <laughs> Uh, Ele Ele Eleanor Hip. I don't know. And Hip, what's her name? Right. Oh, anyhow. She stood up and said, It was me! And I was wearing my sister's frock. <laughs> Gee, okay. But uh, Louise Hip, excuse me, takes me a while. I need more RAM. <laughs> Yeah, computer talk. Like I, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, stock air days. Stock air days. Well, it, this came about after after uh, old timers night. Uh, the uh, uh, historical society and uh, Joyce. Where's Joyce? Joyce. Hey, hell. Was it the Civic Center no, that we partnered with? The, the New Brighton JCs. The JCs. Yes. 
okay, to uh, get back into. I think it was it was uh, what uh, probably two years after, wasn't it? Uh, when the uh, uh, when stock air days came about, that we had a, a, a little concession there, and uh, and uh, here we had the, the Pellows. They were driving their uh, their uh, old car, and they're they're still. We got that that race going on from New London to New Brighton every year, and ah, uh, Joyce, I got to come to you again. And we had train rides. Had this uh, 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 locomotive pulling what two or three cars, passenger cars, and people would pay a small amount to uh, to ride that. And uh, was it because of uh, insurance costs, wasn't it, that we had to stop? Well, that that was the main reason. Yes. But we offered rides for five dollars for adults, three dollars for kids. And the first year we had ten thousand people riding the train. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. I just did research on that for Facebook. So yeah, that was popular. It was. But insurance was uh, cost too much. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. What did I do? There. There. We had a float built, built like a like a locomotive <laughs> on a trailer. And uh, we'd ride in the back there and wave at people. And Rhubarb Fest, which is coming up. Rhubarb Fest. <coughs> And uh, you know, picture people sitting there. Oh, you gotta come for sure this year because this uh, uh, this entertainment that we're gonna have. This this guy and his daughter came last year for uh, stock air. They, they just came and they hauled out some uh, some instruments and started performing for us. And they're good. They are really, really good. They do it gratis. They just love to do it. And I guess we're going to have them this year for uh, for uh, the rhubarb fest. And here we are, are out picking rhubarb uh, the day before. And uh, like uh, like Fred had said, they get uh, uh, you know I don't know five six hundred pounds of rhubarb. And uh, we give uh, approximately half of that to teas, and the rest we package in three pound, um, three pound, yeah, I think three pound uh, uh, packages, and sell it. You can't get it any fresher than that. You won't find any anything in any store that's any fresher than this. Because what we actually we start selling it. Saturday, we we pick. We're normally done back from picking by noon, and uh, uh, Ron is busy packaging it up, and uh, sometimes they have a hard time getting it packaged before people come, start to come and buy it. It's a very good deal. Now we jump into Race Creek Common. Race Creek Commons is what they're turning the, the arsenal into. This is going to be, supposedly, this is going to be a town. And it's probably going to dwarf uh, New Brighton. They've been, they've been working on this for years. It, they, and there was stories there was going to be Vikings, uh, practice field, they were going to have an airport there, all kinds of things. And this now is under the joint development authority between Ramsey County and the city of Arden Hills. And right now, they're up in the northwest 
corner, there's 40 acres that has been designated as ready for development. And this, this is a, a kind of a picture of what they're going to have. It. Like they've, they've got walking trails, they've got athletic fields, they, they got ideas. I remember mean, years ago that I went to a, a show where they were showing what was all going to go in here. And I don't know if they're done fighting about it or not, but uh, I don't know. supposedly it's, it's going to go through and we'll see. That's it.